do it. Well, not bad. I'm just going in to hear this Diana what she has to mm -hmm. say. I think we are all on the same issue. Let me let me get coming after blacks joining the Tory party. That's good luck to the brother. I don't think he understands us as a Caribbean people. And worst of all, he's in the worst party that brought all these problems onto us here. We can start from since Powell went to the Caribbean to invite the nurses to come to this country, as he was then the Minister of, of, of uh, Health. And they're going back to the Caribbean at this very moment to bring back more nurses. And I hope our people would be wise enough to know, don't get caught in the way they treated us. To the name slandering, but it's a bit little, too little, too late. You know, certain birdies have told me, you know, that it's it's just for show. This this thing, it's just for show. It's not really going to help a cause. And what's the follow-up going to be? Having to go through more bureaucracies. This is done with that argument I... because then bureaucracies uh, they would exclude you and they would be so um, difficult for people to manoeuvre and manipulate uh, that there would still be people dropping out of this system because of the bureaucracy to have your rights reinstated. We as a people don't let the Prime Minister and Home Secretary dictate to us. We must take it into our own hands to strategize and put in front of them what we want, not what they're going to tell us they'll do now. I do not trust any one of them. Home Secretary, our Prime Minister. I am Alex Pascal. Thank you. I don't business. In yeah, because I want to know what's going on. So, um, your name? Angela. Angela. Nice to meet you, Angela. Are, are you, you from Jamaica or are you from? Jamaican descendant. So you're, you're, you're part of the first generation? First generation, yeah. My mom and dad came up in the 50s. Had a brother that had problems up here because he never got for the citizenship. Didn't get deported. He, he did work in this country, so as far as I'm concerned, he would be entitled to things like pensions, but he's still struggling to get back into these countries. But How long ago was this he got deported? Mm -hmm. Um, it would have been in the 80s. In the 80s? It would have been in the 80s he was deported. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm first generation black British. Like, I was. I don't use the British. Yeah, I was born in 1969, born here. I'm a Jamaican born abroad. That's what I mean. There you go. Yeah, it's a, it's I'm a not difference. Claiming no British under no circumstances. So, in this, I mean, what do you think is going to come from this? this it would be nice if there were some guarantees that all of those that have been affected by the Thatcher regime, either that they would be compensated or that their entitlement would be reinstated. Those that have been deported, they would have freedom of travel. Those that have lost their jobs, that's where the compensation would come in. Those that have ended up in prison, that would have their sentence commuted and again, more um, compensation for them. And to have the right they never come up here for fun. They come up here because they was invited yes. to come up here. They come up here to build a country that just completely violate and disrespect them to this day. And generations from my parents, them and your parents, them are still being violated and disrespected. It, the argument's supposed to done. So there was something I heard a couple of years back about anybody born in, um, I think it was. 1964 and before in Jamaica gets automatic um, citizenship in, in England or something like I, that. I, I don't know about that. that. I, number one, I'd have been too young. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, young. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying for that is... Um, for the end, at the time of indi before independence. Before yeah. independence. Yes. But then I do remember that my parents, they had the opportunity to apply for dual citizenship. Yes. Okay. Now, whilst my mum did apply for dual citizenship, my dad is a Jamaican national and wasn't giving it up for anybody, even though he could have had the dual, and it was under duress mm. that he actually went for the um, dual citizenship. So I don't know about no automatic um, citizenship around 1964. I know you had to apply in the 70s, mid to late 70s. There was an application that you could have gotten dual citizenship. Okay. Let me turn around this way because I can yeah. get the sound, I get the people this way as well. The other thing, um, I mean, who do you think's to blame? Can you put your finger on someone? Who would you point at 
they, they, it's not one somebody, it's not one something, it's a combination of things. So to lay blame and say it, it's um, you responsible, me responsible, it, it's not that simple. I think there's a, a number of factors that actually do need to be considered. And to a certain extent, we as a people, we need to um, take some responsibility for our inaction as well. Because some of the people then that are affected was offered the opportunity and for whatever reason, they never took advantage of that. Equally, so if for example, I came up here in the as a child in the 50s or early 60s, as a child, okay, and then my parents then, the same both my parents then have died, and as a child, I didn't know that my parents didn't take advantage of that. So I'm in that group, I'm affected by legislation, but didn't even know it. The fact that I may not have ever left the country means that I may not have had an up-to-date passport. I wouldn't even know. And there's lots of people that's in that group that are affected and didn't even know that they were affected until legislation started to change. So, one... But it's not one person to blame. It's a combination of circumstances so that needs to be looked at. The fact of the passport, that some people have not, you know, got a passport or ever applied for a passport, puts them in this area where no one really knows. They're kind of off the records, you could They're say. They're kind of off the radar for real. But, you know, with the legislation that was coming out in 2014, you need to have... Um, um, proof of citizenship to rent an apartment. You need to have proof of citizenship to get a job. You need to have proof of citizenship to access health care. You know, if you've never needed that, and now all of a sudden you need it, you it's going to be very difficult for you to produce that even evidence if you never ever had it. And then you are criminalised for not having that. This is a clear system where you are treated guilty as a criminal, as an overstayer, as an illegal citizen, as an illegal immigrant, mm. you're treated as that first and foremost before anybody else. Show me how that's right. Do you think it's a case of that they see that it's nearing a time where your generation are getting older, you're going to be claiming pension, you're going to be needing more health care, so they try to, try to get rid of that by doing the shredding of the documents <laughs> Before you come of age, <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, Save I don't a few, have no some faith, pennies. no trust in in um, in this government at all. Absolutely none. So if they have Machiavellian techniques, I'm sure that they've deployed those. Where we, as a people, them, we would be the one that's disadvantaged. Absolutely. So, I think Diane Abbott's spared in this this discussion, and I, I can see a lot of mixed. Um, communities here you know it's not just just West Indian there's, there's white people here I mean this affected most mostly the the, the West Indian community and, and some of the Indian community at yeah, the time first and foremost because they were the ones that was invited yes they were originally invited if people migrate for whatever reason we need to remember that those that came over from the Windrush period it was on an invitation yes it was on an invitation and a very weird invitation because they never Paid the fares for my gener my parents and generations they to come the, up. The, 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 the boat tickets. And they had to buy it seventy nine pound yeah. if you fly yeah. or if you detect the boat. The same seventy nine pound. Mm. And I'm not really going to go into the treatment that they received. You know when when they came up here because to a certain extent we're still receiving it now. Yeah. They had it to a worse degree. Don't get me wrong. You know, but when they came, there wasn't any laws in place. Imagine that you need a piece piece of legislation to tell you do not disrespect or violate a black man because he is a black man. You need a piece of legend what the hell is that so they had it a lot harder than what, what we had it in terms of race relations but that doesn't mean to say that that behavior is still not happening now because it is happening now is, do you feel that the, this creates a identity crisis Danny <laughs> uh, this creates an identity crisis for for, for the, this, your generation in, in a sense I mean you say you claim Jamaica. First and foremost, but that's down to my parents. They never ever gave up being a Jamaican. They absolutely did not and refused to. Why should they? Why should they? So I don't have um, an identity crisis. I know I'm African Jamaican. I know that. Mm. But where you get to the point where you start having mixed parentage, mm. you know, you know, from from my parents, what mixed what mixed race meant meant that one come from country and one come from town. That was mixed race. <laughs> well, mine's that was mixed race. race. <laughs> you know, who come from country or who come from town, <laughs> and that's as far as they got. But now when you got completely different races, they would already have uh, an identity crisis. Not all of 
them, not all of them, but they will be within those that do have an identity crisis. And why not? They're not fit with one group 100% more than they would with another group 100%. If you don't fit, you don't fit. So you, do you think any action is going to come from this? As I said, when you um, started filming, it would be nice to get some assurances and some guarantees of what is going to happen, that those that have been affected by that racist piece of legislation, that they will get some kind of compensation. Well, and that their rights will be um, reinstated. I mean, I hope without that... having to go through more bureaucracies. This is done what... with that argument I... because then bureaucracies uh, they would exclude you, and they would be so um, difficult for people to manoeuvre and manipulate uh, that there would still be people dropping out of this system because of the bureaucracy to have your rights reinstated. It's ridiculous. Uh, so, because I know our parliament likes to take time doing things to a point where people forget about it or they yeah, they die off and stuff the bureaucracy the red tape is, you know um, I just hope they don't drop the baton on this I mean the people don't drop the baton on this and, and let it slide you know well, uh, or get distracted because you want your your rights reinstated here but you're looking not you're looking reparations reparations you're looking reparation but uh, um, people need to do the right thing brothers and sisters need to wake up they absolutely need to wake up do not believe the hype do not believe the propaganda and focus on what the real agenda is it's really interesting because you're saying re refer reparations is is that you know it's like t in almost twofold you have rebuild this country through slavery mm -hmm. for the sugar mm -hmm. and, and stuff you know finance the, the wealth of this country mm -hmm. and then after the war even serving in the war and then after the war helping to get this country back mm -hmm. together again and this is how your generation has been treated <laughs> oh no not even two pennies oh, to rub no. together for oh, it oh no show me how that's right Show it's not right. That's right. It's not right. I think a lot of people. There's a lot of people who don't agree with um, um, getting the the, the, the what, reparations. Reparations. They're saying, oh, forget it, this and that, and blah blah. But I know that the Jews forget their reparations. No, exactly. I mean, no, I, I think not. They never will. I think not. They never so will. why must me? No, no. Why must me? Nor would the tax man ever forget. No. <laughs> so. You, you know, know, the flipping slave owner, right. they were compensated in the tune of how much I can't even count that high. Exactly. They never stopped it, really, Anna. They never stopped it. So well, actually, why, why we, we must forget reparations? Actually, to be, to be quite honest, because my parents are from St. Thomas, Murat Bay, and it's through the rebellion in Murat Bay, mm, which gave... Vogel, yes, Sam Sharp, Exactly. Like they, they actually gave so much problems, they didn't want to continue with mm. slavery. You know, and it kind of spurred on from, you know, other places, even in Haiti with uh, Charlemagne and stuff like that. And then they just paid. They paid the slave owners in this country. They got recompense. Yeah. Can I just say a word out to all those gangsters out there? If you think you're a real gangster, behave like Paul Bogle yeah. or behave like Sam Sharp. Exactly. They're the original gangster. Everybody else are just wallet. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Anyway, lovely to speak to you and give me that information. All right, you're more than yeah. welcome. And, uh, Jamaican, yes. and she was affected or anybody was affected by that? Uh, she hasn't been affected personally. Um, her mum has passed on, so she's not affected. Oh, okay. Uh, so we should be okay, but you know, still got represented for everyone else. So what do you think is going to actually happen here, <clears throat> and what will come out of it? Well, personally, um, I sort of, um, I'm sort of like backing um, a, a MP candidate uh, for Hackney, which is called uh, Pauline Pierce, and um, so she sort of gave me the heads up about this event uh, to sort of come down and see what's, what's happening, but. Um, you know, according to, to some people, um, you know, the MPs that are in position to do something that have been elected, you know, are supposed to be representing us, uh, you know, they've been in here for ages, you know, they should have foreseen or, you know, this coming, or at least had a little whistle blow or something like that. Uh, so I would say that it's, um, you know, it's just, while the publicity is there and everyone's kicking up a fuss, this has happened. Mm. Why couldn't this happen 
two, three years ago, you know? Yes. When all the people were getting deported, for, for instance, out of the detainer centres. Yes, I mean, this is, a, this is like... dragged off a bus in Lewisham. Yes. Why didn't this happen then? Well, this is, this is, I mean, this has been so quiet, a quiet storm, and it's just come up out of nowhere, you know, right out of a, right at the convenient time where a lot of people are, are reaching of age of getting pensions and needing more help on the NHS and stuff, mm. they paid into this country um, for, for decades, and, and this is how they've been treated. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, who would you blame for this? A lot, of a lot of people point their finger at Theresa May because she was the Home Secretary at the time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, a lot of people want to point the finger that way. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we let people to represent us. If they're not representing us within the first term, why do we keep them in for a second or fourth and third term, you know? Mm. Get them out, get someone in that actually represent us, speak up for us, um, and highlight these things that's, that could be happening give us a heads up you know or there's no point in, in being in having people in there if they're not filtering down what you know what could happen possibilities what we can do to you know unify um, and strengthen numbers really do you have a sense of uh, anger or more disappointment well if it was my mum getting you know I would be angry I would be angry you know, but I, my my friend's mum, for example, um, is happening to her. She's been here 50 years. She's 60 years old. With three children, and you know they're telling this to her that she's got to leave the country. And she's like, well, I've been here for so long. Paid all her taxes. Paid her dues. Kids. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, if you can have, if your grassroots are here, you've got a house. You've got a GP. You've got indefinitely to remain. So what's the problem? What terms and conditions have changed? Mm. So here I am with is it MBE. Alex, it will be. <laughs> Alex, one of the founding members of founding member of of the Nine Hill Carnival. Well, not founding, but I have been chairman of the carnival for quite Chairm some time exactly. during the turbulent era. Of the turbulent era, we we met um, uh, briefly when. Jeremy Coleman came down to the carnival and you done an That's interview right. with him. That is right. And, uh, and he's doing quite a job. And he's doing quite a job. It's, it's been a long time now. He's doing quite well. So what brings you down here to Parliament? Well, I'm just from the Commonwealth um, State head visit. State, the heads of states meeting, etc. Yeah. And I was covering the one on climate change, meeting a lot of the brothers and sisters from the other parts of the world. But in particular, I, I've been down there to listen to people, what they have to say, especially on our subject on what we call immigration. I've just met Kwateng there, the black guy in the Tory party, and he was frightened to talk to me because he think I'm coming after blacks joining the Tory party. That's good luck to the brother. I don't think he understands us as a Caribbean people. And worst of all, he's in the worst party that brought all these problems onto us here. We can start from since Powell went to the Caribbean to invite the nurses to come to this country, as he was then the Minister of, of, of uh, Health. And they are going back to the Caribbean at this very moment to bring back more nurses. And I hope our people would be wise enough to know, don't get caught in the way they treated us. On the situation that we are facing now, is dying and it's going to open chasms from everywhere it is a serious issue to bring and to be arresting people molesting people and sending them back to the caribbean the way they have done that is evil evil i'm not for that at all we as a people don't let the prime minister and home secretary dictate to us we must take it into our own hands to strategize and put in front of them what we want, not what they're going to tell us they'll do now. I do not trust any one of them, Home Secretary or Prime Minister. I am Alex Pascal. Thank you. Pascal, right. one more question. Why has this just been highlighted it's now? Not, no, it's not highlighted now. It's been brewing there for donkeys. If it was not the heads of the Commonwealth, we what a time we met yeah, when they turned up here. Although, I have to say, 
there are a few of our heads that I'm dubious about. They don't want to face the camera and in the background they are struggling among themselves as to who should be the person to speak and the person who I think should be really doing the talk because they have the majority of the people of the Caribbean here should have been the Jamaican Prime Minister but he been dodging talking. Tell him I say I understand and it's well known. He cannot do that. We are a Caribbean people all told. This is not the federation where one say up there we wouldn't join and the rest collapse. Cut that shit out. Thank you very much, Alex. Bye. That was a good one. Yeah, I, I met him. Um,